Welcome to another exciting episode on The Psychologist NG TV with me, Dr. Blessing Ntamu. I hope you've been doing well because for me, I've been doing really well and I'm totally excited to be here with you today to share some useful information, exciting, educative information with you. Today we're going to be talking about sleep deprivation, the consequences of sleep deprivation, why you should ensure that you have sufficient sleep every night. On this video, we will first of all try to differentiate between insomnia and sleep deprivation and I'll go ahead and give you six reasons why having sufficient sleep is a must, why you must ensure that you're not sleep deprived. So what is insomnia? Now insomnia refers to difficulties initiating or maintaining sleep. Difficulties initiating or maintaining sleep or having non-restorative sleep. So when you have insomnia, what it means is that you have difficulties falling asleep, so you stay up late struggling to fall asleep, or you have difficulties maintaining sleep, that's staying asleep, so you have fragmented sleep, you have to wake up several times in the midst of the night, Otherwise, you sleep sufficiently, but by the time you wake up, you do not feel rested. So you experience what we call non-restorative sleep. That's insomnia. What about sleep deprivation? Sleep deprivation is nothing like insomnia. So you don't have any problem initiating sleep. You do not have any problem maintaining sleep. You don't even experience non-restorative sleep. So when you go to sleep and sleep enough, you wake up feeling rested. But you're just not having enough sleep. That is to say, either because of work or some other thing or some other hobbies, like people who watch movies until very late in the night, you're not having sufficient sleep. You're not sleeping for enough hours. Now, how much sleep do we really need? You want to know really enough about how much sleep you need, refer to my video on insomnia. But I'll just give us some summary. Now, newborn babies need about 17 hours sleep to function optimally, grow well, feel well, and all of that. Now, teenagers and adolescents need about 13 hours sleep to function optimally. What about young adults? Young adults need about 11 hours sleep to function optimally. What about adults? Now, adults need between 7 to 9 hours sleep to function optimally. And that's plus or minus 1. So some people could still do very well with 6 hours sleep or something like that. Now... The sleep that we need is individual. It's different for every individual. And you have to find out how much sleep you need to function optimally every day. But you need to have at least six hours sleep to function optimally the next day. So check that out and ensure that you have at least six hours sleep. For some people, six hours will not be enough. You will need about um, eight hours to nine hours sleep to feel well. So you must find out which is your need of sleep and work with that. Now let's go ahead to reasons why we must ensure that we are not sleep deprived. Why must you avoid sleep deprivation? Now before I go ahead to give you six reasons why you should avoid sleep deprivation, I'm going to tell you a little story. Now there was this period when I was doing a number of online courses and that meant I had to be awake almost all through the night every day working on these courses. So I was sleep deprived for weeks. Night after night, I stayed awake doing one online course after the other. And I was sleep deprived after some weeks. I had been sleep deprived for some weeks. Now, there was this particular night that I actually took caffeine. Now, I love coffee. Or maybe I used to love coffee. But most times, I took the calf. You know, and the effect was mild on me. But that particular night, I decided to take black coffee. And then the next day when I woke up, my husband had arranged... An outing for us to go have fun. I mean, he did this just for our good. And he was really excited about this, this trip, this mini trip. Everybody was excited, but I felt rotten. I felt completely irritable because I was severely sleep deprived. And so I didn't feel happy. I was irritable all through the trip. Every little thing got me upset. And my husband kept wondering what he was doing wrong, what was going wrong, what had gone wrong. I mean, and when he couldn't take it anymore, we had to have a conversation. Now, I'm not going to tell you how that conversation went, but I'm just going to tell you sleep deprivation is very bad for your health, very bad for your mood, and you should avoid it. Six reasons why you should avoid sleep deprivation. One, brainwashing. Some of you might have read my article on brainwashing. 
Now, literally, every day, our brain needs to be washed. Whilst we are active during the day, there is a buildup of toxins in our brains, including beta amyloid proteins. Now, these toxins cause plaques, they build up in the form of plaques, and they clog the neural system in our brains, and they prevent efficient information transmission in the brains. Now, this happens daily. When we go to sleep, the glymphatic system usually releases a cerebrospinal fluid that mixes up with our brains and washes away these plaques and washes away these toxins. And so the next day we feel refreshed, revived, and we can function normally. Now, this brainwashing occurs most effectively during sleep. And research has shown that only sleep is able to keep away the buildup of beta amyloid plaques. Why do you need brainwashing? What are the consequences or the effect of having a buildup of beta amyloid plaques in your brain? Now, beta amyloid plaques have been severely implicated in all of the negative effects of Alzheimer's disease. So these beta amyloid plaques buildup have been implicated in uh, the initiation of dementia and then also in all of the, uh, all of the uh, negative effects of dementia. That's Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. Who wants to end up with dementia? Who wants to end up with Alzheimer's disease? So before now, we thought there was nothing we could do to keep away Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. Now we know that at least we can contribute in one way or the other to reduce our risk of having Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia when we grow old. Why not take our chances? So please ensure that you're having sufficient sleep every night to reduce the risk of having Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. Now, reason number two why you must ensure that you're not sleep deprived is because when we are sleep deprived, the part of our brains known as the hippocampus, the part of the brain responsible for making new memories, function at 40% less of its original capacity. So when you're sleep deprived, the hippocampus, your hippocampus will function at 40% less of its original capacity. Now, this means that you will have problems making new memories. And also, for our memories to be able to solidify, for our memory engrams and memory traces to be very strongly embedded in the long-term memory, we need sufficient sleep. So, sleep deprivation implies a weak working memory and also a weak long-term memory. You don't want that. So, ensure you're having sufficient sleep every night. Now, the third reason why you must ensure that you're not sleep deprived is for every four hours sleep that our body misses, our body feels the need to take 900 calories more of food. So when you're sleep deprived, you're going to be eating more food than you should be eating. That means you'll be gaining like about a kg every week or thereabout. And now this is also something I can testify to beyond what research says. Now, there was this time I just saw that I was putting on weight. This was like a few months ago and even up to now I'm trying to battle it. I found out that during the day I was always craving food. I was hungry for more food than I used to eat usually. And it didn't really occur to me what was happening until I did some refresher courses on sleep, the science of sleep. And I realized because I was sleep deprived, my body was craving more food because I was sleep deprived. And that means I'll be adding like one kg every week. So for those of us trying to fight our weight, this is one secret. When you have sufficient sleep, you're likely to, your body is likely to demand less food, less calories every day. And that means you're not going to be adding weight from sleep deprivation. Yeah, so that's reason number three why you should ensure that you're having sufficient sleep. What is reason number four why you should ensure you're having sufficient sleep? Now, this is reason number four. Sleep deprivation aggravates cortisol production. Now, cortisol is the hormone for stress. It's called the stress hormone. It's the hormone responsible for starting the fight and flight reaction and for making us feel stressed. So when we have more cortisol in our system, we're going to feel more stress. This leaves us having mood swings, you know, low moods, feeling irritable, and leaves you at the risk for depression. So you must ensure you have enough sleep, lack of sleep, can make you have low moods and then make you feel irritable and feel depressed. Reason number five. Now, reason number five, why you must ensure that you're not sleep deprived and you're having enough sleep 
is that sleep deprivation weakens our immune system. It reduces our immunity. That means you're going to be susceptible to more diseases, more infections. So when you're sleep deprived, you have a weaker immune system and then you have the tendency to fall sick more easily. Now, the sixth reason and the last reason why you must ensure that you're not sleep deprived is sleep deprivation is implicated in almost all of the major diseases that people suffer from heart disease to diabetes to cancer and even in psychosomatic illnesses and psychological disorders like schizophrenia like uh, per, uh, personality disorders and all of those so sleep deprivation is one of the major cause of several diseases both somatic psychosomatic and psychological disorders on the long term i'm sure you don't want to have schizophrenia i'm sure you don't want to have depression you don't want to have heart disease you don't want to have cancer any of those so you can reduce your, your risks for these diseases by having sufficient sleep for anyone that's sleep deprived out there make it a point to begin to ensure you have at least six hours of sleep every day depending on the person like i said it varies from person to person while six hours of sleep is sufficient for some it is not sufficient for others so find out how much hours of sleep your body needs to function optimally the next day and ensure that you're having enough sleep this is something you to ensure because you don't want to fall sick. You want to keep up optimum health. It's been a nice time with you here today on the Psychologist NDTV. Until I come your way again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>